Hello children. Today we're in this beautiful wetland habitat here in South Florida. And today we're just out here looking for just any kinds of weird animals that we could find. I don't know. Seems to be a good time of year and habitat for some cool grasshoppers and katydids. So let's see what all we could find. These two absolutely beautiful birds flying around in circles right here are sandhill cranes. Some of the largest bird species that we get here in Florida and are quite a common sight in these wetland ecosystems. Even from this high, you could still see the distinctive coloration of this species, with the body being an overall brownish gray color, with a white cheek patch and a bare red patch at the top of the head. While these birds might look like they might be some sort of heron or stork, they are actually closer related to rails, a kind of smaller wetland bird that includes the gallinules, soras, and other wetland species. This cute little insect right here is a linear-winged grasshopper, or Aptenopides spinarioides. This is one of the most common species of grasshopper that you could find out here in these wetland habitats in South Florida. While the genus Aptenopides is pretty hard to identify, Spinarioides is the only species present in this area of Palm Beach County. Adults of the genus Aptenopides could be easily recognized from any other common or related grasshopper species by the pale stripe that runs behind the eye and continues into the wing, with the wing being very short and thin. There is oftentimes a thinner black stripe bordering this pale stripe. This is a male, and this is a female of the same species. As you can see, she is a lot larger and more robust in body shape, but shares the same color pattern overall. This individual is very unusual for the species in the fact that the base coloration of the body is brown. Like the male I just showed you earlier, these guys are almost always green in coloration, but I guess that since this wetland is a little drier than the very green and luscious wetlands that I normally find them in, some individuals have adapted and developed more of a brownish overall coloration. This is very cool to see in my opinion as I'm not used to seeing them look like this. This right here is a quite rare sight in South Florida, a native lizard. All jokes aside, this right here is the green anole, the only native species of anole here in Florida. Quite the relief from all the invasive brown anoles I've been seeing. Usually identifying green anoles from brown anoles is quite simple, with green anoles being green and brown anoles being brown. However, green anoles can change their color and become brown for camouflage reasons. When coloration is not the option, green anoles can be separated from their white belly, their planar patterning, and their very long, thin snout. This right here, running really fast and making it very hard for me to film it, is a four-spotted velvet ant, which, surprise, is not an ant, but a wasp that is very closely related to the spider wasps. Females are wingless and usually red in coloration, which makes them look like ants. This beautiful dragonfly right here is the elusive phantom darner. This species can be found in the darker, more shaded areas of marshes, and I also find them quite abundantly in cypress swamps. While it is a relatively large dragonfly, the phantom darner is quite small in comparison to other members of the darner family, which would grow to be absolutely massive. The beautifully bold black and green striping carried throughout the entire dragonfly's body, as well as the strange perching stance, make this species equally as impressive. The most distinctive feature of this species, though, is the very narrow waist that looks pinched. This right here is a female Caribbean meadow katydid. This species is probably the most common katydid species here in wetland areas in South Florida. The Caribbean meadow katydid is a relatively small species of katydid, and along with other species of meadow katydid, is diurnal, which is unusual for katydids. The very distinctive green and bright yellow males sing during the daytime. However, females like these are less distinctive overall and cannot possibly make vocalizations like the males do. As you can see, she is biting me, and it kind of hurts, so I'm going to let her go. These are still fun to catch, though. Oh my god, check this out. This is probably the strangest grasshopper we get here in Florida. This is the long-headed toothpick grasshopper, an absolutely unmistakable species that is much more elongated throughout the body than any other grasshopper we have here. As you can see, the legs are elongated, the head is extremely elongated, and even, as you can see on this male, the subgenital plate on this male is elongated. If this grasshopper didn't just move in the slightest as I was walking up to it, 
I would have just thought it was one of the thousands of dead blades of grass in this part of the wetland. I've noticed these to be locally common in these areas of drier wetlands as well as scrubs, with lots of tall grasses, dead grass, shrubs, and pine trees. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out this video right here, where I find one of the most interesting butterflies that you could find in Florida's wetlands. Enjoy!